Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're so glad that you're joining us for our program this evening. We're very happy there are people like you out there that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. If you haven't watched our program before, each week we'll have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to update us on what's been happening on that city and what are some issues that you should know that are coming ahead. And we do encourage you, if you're from that city, be sure to take down their email and phone number and be in contact with them if there's some issues that concern you. Tonight, we're very happy to have as a guest, Steve Smithgall, who is from the Golden Valley City Council. We're glad to have you back. It's been a long time, right? It absolutely yeah. has. I'm very thrilled to be here. I was very pleased when you called me. Our meetings are too few and far between. That's true, that's true. <laughs> and I'll let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience. People in Golden Valley probably know you, but we we're covering nine cities. If you'll tell them a little bit about your background in Golden Valley and on the council. Well, my wife and I have lived in Golden Valley for about 36 years. Ah. And um, the early part of those years, I was mainly involved in, in the school district. I was yeah. involved in the schools, uh, Neal Elementary, Sandberg Middle School, and uh, Cooper High School ah. as our daughters. Uh, went through the program. After they graduated and left the area, ah. I had a little more time on my hands and uh, got myself appointed to the Planning Commission. Oh, yeah. I took over Bob Schaefer's seat mm -hmm. on the Planning Commission. I was on the Planning Commission for nine years. Ah. Then as you may recall, uh, Mike Freiberg left the Golden Valley City Council after one year on the council, he right. was a, he was uh, ran for and was elected as a state representative. So, I was appointed by the sitting council okay. members to serve his second year, sure. and then I ran in a special election and won that to serve uh -huh. his third and fourth year. Right. And uh, and I've since won a an election of my own right. for my a four year term, of which I am currently serving the third year. Uh -huh. so. So you've got a pretty good background on the history of Golden Valley and seeing yes. changes along the way? It's been a great learning experience. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of development going on in Golden Valley. So we'll try to touch on it a little bit and let people know what's happening. Now, be, by Highway 55 and 169, there's several projects that have yes. gotten completed. Maybe you could mention them. Well, the Hello project is in there. and. Uh, uh, that's the building that's kind of gray and orange right. and that's marketed to young professionals mm -hmm. i i have some friends that are living there and uh -huh. uh, they like it very much it has uh, uh, party rooms it has a concierge oh. service it has uh, an outdoor dog uh -huh. a fenced in dog run a swimming pool a uh, party room uh, those are very nice apartments uh -huh. i was there for the um, ribbon cutting was oh, able sure. to actually tour some of the units and the, those are very nice. And then I think right across the street from the Hello Apartments is, is that a senior home project that's right yep, kind of on the other side of the street? Uh, Flourish is the name of it. Oh yeah, I didn't have a name. Uh, and uh, that project is under construction on the former site of the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken right. and Taco Bell. Right. And that's going to be uh, senior housing. Uh, the current phase, mm -hmm. uh, subsequent phases will be assisted living and ah. memory care possibly. Oh, well, then so, it's a long-term uh, project. Yes, uh, fairly good sized project. I, um, you know, thankfully we have enough, uh, enough development going on. I had to get myself a right. little cheat sheet. Good idea. That'll have 102 units. Oh, uh, that's flourish good with. size. So that's a good size project nicely located okay. right off of 55 and 169. So. And when will that be completed? Uh, Roughly. Well, it's under uh, the broken ground now. My guess yeah. would be we'd be looking at uh, maybe six months or something Probably, like that. Probably, right. Yeah. And then uh, Ju the Jewish Housing Project is putting up a special facility that will enable disabled adults to have their own Absolutely. place to live. Absolutely. So give us some I'm information. I'm so excited about that project. That, as, as far as I know, that's the only one in the yeah. United States right I now. I think so, right. It's uh, uh, 45 units of, of housing for handicapped adults mm -hmm. with all the support they need. Uh -huh. It has its own synagogue uh, inside the facility for, uh, for their spiritual needs uh -huh. of the residents. 
and uh, it, it, I couldn't be more excited that mm -hmm. that was uh, that Golden Valley was selected for the oh, location yeah. of that. And just to be clear, uh, residents do not uh, need to be Jewish to oh, live there. Right, right. So it's open for right. all. Uh, but, but they're the sponsor of it, right? Yes, the Jewish housing and programs. Yeah. No, that was an so interesting. That exciting. was another first, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a great thing to be part of. Now, you've approved a bunch of projects, and we'll talk about how far along they are, at Central Park West, which is the area that's by 394 and 100, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Central Park West is very interesting because uh, this whole development laps over the border between right. <laughs> Golden Valley and St. Louis Park. Right. So, um, the a, I believe it's called the AC Hotel. Uh huh. And that's great. Uh, it has a rooftop bar that's open to the public, just oh, for fun. those that would be interested mm. in that. That'd be fun uh, to try. But the hotel itself is in St. Louis Park. Okay. The parking lot for the hotel is in Golden Valley. <laughs> Joint. Uh, the apartment building uh, that's in that development has 199 units, and Ooh. 80 of those units are in Golden Valley. Ah. So I don't know if they have a change of color in the yeah, carpeting. Or something. Right? Or whatever to let you know right. which city you're yeah. in at the time. But... Um, and there's also a future, um, it hadn't started yet, but an 11 story office building will be part oh, of that right. development going forward. So, so what kind of businesses are they looking for that? Well, uh, I think what they probably will be looking for is some major anchor tenants oh, that'll right, take maybe right. a floor or two. Sure. And then uh, I assume there'll be a, a variety mm -hmm. of sizes of suites available for um, any number of businesses. Access will be right. fantastic. It's right at the corner of 55 and oh, 100 right, as right. Or, uh, you can 394 get and 100. So you can get a uh, lot of places in a hurry, right? Yep. Yeah. So. so it's kind of covering a whole ground of, of different kinds of needs that people have. Absolutely. That, it's our first Woonerf too, which is a, a Dutch for a, like an open space for oh, pedestrians yeah. and automobiles ah. uh, as part of that development. Oh, so that's interesting. That's, uh, that's a nice So how thing does that work? Well, it's um, um, it's in between. I believe it's in between the hotel and the apartment okay. building, but it allows uh, motorists to drive in there and drop pedestrians right. off, and it's a space for pedestrians ah, to, to, move to access so. uh, adjoining trails and stuff. Well, and and you're right at a good connection spot for people that like to hike or bike or that type of thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I've uh, been on uh, was the chair of the Golden Valley Bike and pedestrian uh -huh. uh, task force that worked on the comprehensive plan and uh, we have some really wonderful incentives going mm -hmm. on in Golden Valley to increase uh, to add trails right. and fill in pieces of trail that are missing uh, so I think you can look forward to some really nice trail systems in the future of yeah, and there's Golden been Valley. a real growth in people that want to do that that oh are, absolutely and uh, uh, it's a good family activity it's a yep. good individual activity and we're we're staying abreast of cities like minneapolis mm -hmm. that are designating bicycle boulevards right. where the streets are primarily for bicycles motorists have to kind of come second so. well that whole uh area central park is, yes. uh, has had a lot of growth over the last few years, hasn't it? Well, you know, unfortunately, some of that um, original development came online during the Great Recession, yeah, and it was right. kind of slow to fill up. Yeah. But things have really turned around. Oh, and it's, it really uh, has. Moving at a brisk pace now. A good addition. Yes. For people in the whole area. That's right. And then there's some projects that are just under construction that are just getting underway. And maybe you can give a little update on them. There's a Global Point Senior Building. Yeah, that's uh, that project started out as part of a complex called 394. Uh -huh. um, has a, the original building is nearly complete. Ah. And um, and this is this particular is a separate building for senior housing, and I think eventually uh, it was going to yes. Uh, 68 units of assisted living and 30 oh, okay. memory care so units. So again, in that giving building. a whole, yeah. uh, people can stay there through a whole series of changes. Yeah, now one of the things that I've always been uh, in favor of in Golden Valley is I'd like to provide housing like Hello for young professionals, right. and then as they uh, uh, perhaps marry, right. uh, they can move into single family uh -huh. detached homes, of which Golden Valley has a good right. number in different price ranges. 
and then as they get to retirement age, we have uh, uh, retirement developments, oh, and then right, we have right. these uh, assisted living and memory care. So uh, uh, cover the whole life cycle, right? The whole right? arc of a person's right. life, yes. Now, Jaguar and Land Rover are going to expand and maybe do a little reconstruction? Yes. Um, the building permits for that work were just issued, uh, and the demolition of, the, of their existing building should be underway soon. I, one thing I was a little concerned about there is I didn't want to increase the impervious area oh, on the site, right, but they've right. uh, they've figured out a way. Um, they have certain display areas that are paved with uh, oh yeah, paver, where the water so the can go down. water can right. go through. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be a real nice addition to that. Uh, we have uh, quite a number of automo automobile dealerships oh, right, down do. along that strip there. So. And then then there's Laurel Ponds townhomes. Yes, uh, that was, um, they're, they're very compact homes. Mm -hmm. The site is being developed for 24 homes. Uh -huh. they, they only build them as people purchase right, the sites. Right. So I think uh, there's 12 homes in there okay. now. Um, uh, there are only, like I said, there will only be 24. Yeah, about half of them are built. Okay. And so there's probably so 12 more lots. It's well underway. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're very compact. They've got parking underneath. Ah. Uh, they've got um, street access to all yeah. of them. It's it's a real nice development. Mm -hmm. Have their own stormwater management ah. pond at the south edge of Which the site. Which is important. Yes. Uh, and great. then the the last area is Liberty Development. Now that's the Medicine oh. Lake Road. Yeah, I just had the privilege of going to the ribbon cutting for oh. Liberty. Uh -huh. Oh, I think it was uh, August twenty uh, second or thereabouts, uh -huh. and. Uh, my favorite part of that day was, and I didn't realize till we went to the ribbon cutting that uh, many of the units are already occupied. Uh -huh. There's apartments and right. townhomes in that right. complex, 187 apartment Ooh, units pretty good. and 55 townhome units. And I had the privilege while uh, walking through the apartment building to bump into a resident ah. and she spoke very highly of the, ah. of the development oh. and she especially appreciated that it was pet friendly. Uh -huh. uh, they have a they also have a dog run uh -huh. at that development. And as as you may know, the development has contributed significantly to Golden Valley stormwater management. Oh yes, definitely. Plan. Um, the developer provided an enormous concrete underground storage mm -hmm. tank for stormwater and also there's a stormwater pond on the site, right. surface pond. So we've uh, for quite some time, we've had a flooding issue right. in that part of the city and in the adjoining area. Of yeah, New Hope, New Hope and Crystal yep. all and Golden so, Valley need to uh, work on that, right? So, in addition to this work that was done as part of the Liberty mm -hmm. development, it'll slow the flow into the uh, Dakota Ponds. Uh -huh. uh, the owner of the property, across, there's a apartment complex to the east of Liberty. Oh, right. Uh, and that property is going to add a stormwater pond on their ah. site as well, which will help oh, right. even more. Right. So uh, we're, we're taking great steps to manage uh, that problem, flooding in right. that part of the city. And it's uh, kind of a long-term project. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's kind of been a, it's a problem that was a long time in the making. <laughs> right, right. And uh, it's, uh, we're making uh, good progress right. toward resolving it. Well, and then something else you should be proud of, and I'm sure you are, is that you've got a new Brookview Community Center. Yeah, the Brookview it Community opened, Center. Now, what date, what, what, when did it open this summer? It was, uh, it opened in the winter, I remember, because it was yeah, kind of cold it, and it stormy. Kind of I think cold. it was uh, right around the first of the year. Okay. Uh, I was there for the ribbon cutting, uh -huh. and there was a tremendous uh, crowd of people that uh -huh. night. And uh, the... Uh, facility is well used. Mm -hmm. I go there often for uh -huh. dinner and for other events right. and I'm, I'm pleased to say that it, it's just, it's enjoying great success. And then tell us a little bit about because you've provided for playgrounds as well as for I mean the meeting and the eating and the adult things but you've also got things for the children too. Well, yeah, you can it, tell us about what you've got you available. Know, way back in the beginning of the, the Brookview Community Center journey, uh -huh. we had a citizen panel and uh, they developed a number of different proposals that came to the council. Sure. The most expensive proposal I believe was $65 million and uh -huh. it included uh, a new building at the site okay. of the current 
Brookview, and another new building at the corner of Highway 55 and Winnetka. Oh. Um, the, the particular scheme that I fell in love with was a total new Brookview Community Center at $39 million, I okay. believe it was. Right. But we came to the realization that the only way we could fund a $39 million project was to uh, hold a referendum. Right. And I honestly didn't think it would pass. Yeah, you so, don't know nowadays. So we asked the uh, designers to go back to the drawing uh -huh. board, and they came to us with a $15 million okay. renovation that seemed to have all the things all that, you wanted, that right? we wanted. Uh -huh. But then um, there was uh, some pushback at the public uh -huh. hearings, and and there was, a, I don't want to call it an outcry, but there was a lot of interest in something for children. Right. So we added the the indoor play structure, uh -huh. the backyard, right. at a cost of three million dollars to the project. So the building that you see there now is uh, eighteen point three million dollars, I believe it was, and I think we got every penny of that value. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a fine, fine building. Right. The backyard is heavily used, right. um, it, except for late at night, of course. Yeah. But you can go there any time right. during normal hours and see many, many kids playing in there and. And it's both indoors and outdoors facilities, well, the right? The backyard's an indoor right, facility. Right, that's the indoor one, but there's also some outdoor well, ones, too? the outdoor uh, would be over at Brookview Park. Oh, okay. And that's very nice, too. Right. That was recently renovated. Okay, because I, I, noticed, uh, I yeah. noticed that there was both. But yeah, I, the city's been going through a program of uh, updating all the play uh, structures so they're right, handicapped right. accessible. And, uh, and the way uh, Rick Berno, our park uh -huh. and rec director, They'll schedule neighborhood meetings at the individual sites, and they invite residents to come in and look at a, uh, two or three different proposals, and they'll select the right. one that they want for right. their neighborhood. Right. So as you travel around Golden Valley, the uh -huh. play structures at different Maybe. locations might be slightly different. And, yeah, because uh, different people want different things, yeah. right? And the one at Brookview, Brookview Park, is newly renovated, ah, very nice. Along with the community and, center, they're right? both and, new. And now we have the indoor play right. structure, right. and uh, you may have seen the the outdoor right. um, uh, shelter for uh, weddings and oh, picnics right. Uh, right. that was added. So. And then also part of the facility is, I have to stop and look, because I think it's the address, 316 Bar and Grill. Yeah, the address of the facility right. is 316. Uh, the Bar and Grill, um, some of the history of that is even before the old building was torn down, uh, there were some some changes in the legislation at the state level, and, and I think our mayor was uh, interested in, or involved in that, uh, which allowed the sale of uh, strong liquor and beer right. at the Brookview Community Center. Right. And I was very excited to be there on the day of the ribbon cutting at the old building. Uh -huh where we uh, served up the first pint uh -huh. of strong beer. <laughs> and uh, so that carried over into, sure. the, into the 316 restaurant. They've got uh, a full bar, they got craft beers. And one thing that they appear to have done recently is uh, they've eliminated some of the uh, menu items that weren't maybe quite oh, as popular sure. as some of the others. And, uh, and um, the food, uh, is excellent there. Ah. The, the the items that are still on the menu are just fantastic. So I'll have to go try that out. I oh, knew I would, it was there, but we haven't made it I, there. No, so. I didn't. I'd certainly encourage yeah. it. It's a very nice restaurant. And then you have a program during the summertime called Music on the Deck. Yes, uh, I've uh, haven't had the opportunity oh. to get there. I know I've I've been to some of the band or some right. of the musical performances over at the Brookview right. Picnic Shelter. But I would encourage people to go ahead and take a look at the Brookview uh, well, website. Well, both of them would be yeah, or th places where the weather's yeah. going to change pretty soon, but where you can take your family and have a nice evening yeah. out. And yeah, yeah. there's a variety of programs going on in the, in the Brookview Community Center all the time. So. And then, there's, then there'll be lots of opportunities for people to rent spaces for group meetings, right? Oh, they have... Uh, they have small meeting rooms where you might have a meeting with six or eight people. Uh -huh. And I'd like to point out that the conference tables in those small okay. rooms are uh, recycled trees that were knocked down during the storm oh. of a couple years ago that swept through uh -huh. Brookfield. Yeah, I remember that. Many trees were destroyed and they were able to 
rescue some of those trees and cut them into slabs to make oh, the cool. conference tables. That's I'd encourage cool. you to take a look at I that will, when you're I in the will. building. That's, They're that's beautiful. That's pretty cool. Uh, and it, so in addition to the smaller rooms, they have a very large party room that can be subdivided into two that has its own bar right. upstairs and it has access. Both sides of that big party uh -huh. room have access to rooftop decks. And people are always so. looking for that. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes yeah. in short supply. Uh, my wife and I went to a party we had two friends turning 50, uh -huh. and they uh, pooled their resources and had a great party in uh, one of those rooms. Right. So. Now we'll switch topics again. Douglas Drive has had a lot of construction on it for, right, going on two years now? Yeah, I would or say, yes, two years. Yeah, I, I was, Maybe you can tell about what changes can people now see because the construction is just well, not the, completed. Yeah, the... The main thing with Brookview, or I mean with uh, Douglas Drive, is that we widened the roadway. Right. And uh, we did that to provide walking trails and bicycle trails mm. on both sides of the street. Right. We, um, in order to make that happen, we had to purchase um, a handful of homes, I think mm -hmm. maybe four. Uh, unfortunately, you never like to displace oh, people, right. but. Uh, it's a fantastic roadway. There's two roundabouts, mm -hmm. and the roundabouts have the effect of s kind of re slowing the traffic right. a little bit. Right. Um, um, like I said, bike and walking trails on mm -hmm. each side. Uh, lots of plantings uh, oh, right. on the center and, uh, and along the sides. A new bridge over Bassett Creek. Oh, so, I forgot about that. Uh, You're right. It's a, it's a beautiful roadway, mm -hmm. and as the as the plant material grows in, it's going to be even better. And uh, I've many times uh, said that one dream I have for the city is that all of the Hennepin County roadways in Golden Valley, which would be uh, uh, Glenwood Avenue, Medicine Lake Road, Winnetka, Golden Valley Road, would eventually get that same treatment. Ah, yeah. Uh, but it is expensive. Oh, right. It was. Um, uh, 24 million dollars mm. for about a mile and a half and uh, it was paid for half by Golden Valley and half by Hennepin County right. so uh, kind of a joint venture yeah it'll be a long time before we do all the <laughs> right, roads but right. uh, eventually I'd sure like to see that and then we'll talk a little bit about Highway 55 now it's at like sort of a talking stage, and maybe it has been for a long time, about what are some concerns that people have about this road and what are some changes that you might want to make. So it's kind of at the beginning stage, right? Yeah, we're, um, uh, there's been some uh, uh, proposals at the state legislature. Mm -hmm. It's a Minnesota highway. Right. And one of the big issues for me is that the uh, the Highway 55 is so it so divides our community. Oh, it's it so, does. So difficult to get across. Right. Uh, some of the things that, uh, and again, this is very early stages. Right. Uh, some of the things that we've been looking at are uh, uh, installing a pedestrian tunnel. Okay. At ah. uh, at where Douglas Drive crosses. Oh, sure. With a particular eye toward those per Perpich Arts School students oh, uh, yeah. that are yeah. that are often crossing the highway right. at that point. Um, some of the things we have done is, uh, you may have noticed that just west of Douglas Drive, we uh, closed off that road that used to come into Douglas Drive and created a, an off-ramp and oh, an on-ramp right, right. to Highway 55. Right. So th that, that's going to improve access uh -huh. there. Uh, the other thing we looked at is um, we recently had a team of uh, real estate and uh, development uh -huh. and construction experts come and meet at the city and develop a plan for downtown Golden Valley, ah. which we won't see their final report yet for another month or so, but one of the items proposed was kind of a skyway, uh, a elevated ring of ah. pedestrian above the intersection of Winnetka and Highway 55. Oh, interesting. And uh, that really appealed to me. That would allow people coming from any direction to right. go up there and then exit down yeah. in any direction to uh -huh. continue their travel. That would be a so, different kind of yeah, well, uh, solution for an area. There have been a few residents that for many years have advocated for a, a green, like a land bridge or a greenway uh -huh. over the right. over Highway 55. And and I know yeah, that's been done in Seattle uh -huh. and uh, 
other places very very expensive but uh, also very nice, but that's for the way distant right. future. Well, and because now it's 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 at a talking point and pulling ideas together, right? Yeah. yeah. And then what do you foresee as the next steps that would come after that? Well, one thing I've proposed is, I mean, we're talking about spending a fair amount of money right. to put this right. tunnel over at right. Douglas Drive. Um, you know, I, I think what I'd like to do and what I've advocated in one of our council manager meetings is that we, and it would cost money, but right. I would like to see us do a study of the entire Highway 55 oh. corridor ah. through the city and identify uh, potential areas where we could cross. Uh, like I have in my mind a tunnel at, uh, say, Wisconsin okay. Avenue that would right. come under 55 and then come up on a frontage road on the, on the golf course uh -huh. side. I also think we have an opportunity where the railroad tracks go under Highway 55 at the Perpich, oh, right, near the right, Perpich Art right. School, because we did a similar thing under Highway 100. Uh -huh. There's a roadway and a bicycle trail right. that goes under where the railroad tracks go. So um, I just think it's important to see what we might be able to do and kind of prioritize uh, so we can get the best mm -hmm bang for our buck, so to speak. So is the uh, council looking to establish some kind of group to do this studying and pulling information? Or we're, if somebody well, out there is interested in thinking, I'm really concerned about 55, is there anywhere they can plug into this process? Well, this, this study that I'm talking about yeah. would be uh, um, similar to what we did when we did the mixed use corridor okay. along 394. We actually hired a consultant okay. Right. UHS, I believe it was at that time, and uh, they provide kind of a proposed oh, sure. solution, and then uh, we we have hearings with right. residents right. to to vet those things. We, you know, in a in a city like Golden Valley, you you always look for and welcome, you know, input from oh, residents. Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, it's important that residents right. buy into any solution that's proposed. So people that are concerned about that just keep an eye on what's happening in the city yeah, council meetings. Yeah, keep an eye on, on the website, right. uh, absolutely. Because we're always encouraging people, get involved in your city. I, um, one thing as a similar example is, uh, as you may know, Centerpoint Energy has been running their big 24-inch pipe through Golden Valley, oh, which right, has created right. lots of construction. And I subscribed to the Centerpoint Energy website Every couple of days, I get an update on the ah. project, and I would encourage people to. Oh, that's a uh, good idea. Uh, if you're, if residents that's, that want to. If it affects your commute or where yep. you're driving. And uh, uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation has a similar service where you can subscribe to updates on particular projects. Important for people to keep oh, yeah. aware of things and uh, figure out solutions ahead of when things get blocked yes, out yeah. for you, uh, right? It's been quite a lot of blockage this year. Right. So. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming out this evening and telling our audience about what's happening in Golden Valley. We'll encourage you to tune in next week for part two on Golden Valley issues. We're glad that you're with us, and we hope you'll join us again next week. Bye.